Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com. Uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Hope everybody has a start of their uh, weekend the way they want. Hope everybody gets a little sun, get a little bit of fun, spend some time with their family. And again, what could be better than that? If you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, again, thank you very much for finding us. Uh, I think it's awesome that people are really taking their views of an open mind that there is a process that is out of the normal, right? Out of the normal blend, a uh, little bit out of the box. And you have to be a little bit open-minded to realize that the market does go up and the market does go down. And there is ways that you can take advantage on both sides, not being stubborn, not trading the market that you want instead of having the market that you have and taking advantages of all opportunities. And that's kind of the nuances, all the moving parts what makes up a professional trader. An investor is a completely different animal. You're buying, you're holding, you're praying. When it goes against you, uh, it's a little bit different. But from the trader's standpoint, uh, there's nothing better. There's absolutely nothing better whether you're trading pivots, where you're trading any other way. There's no greater gift that you can give to yourself than the idea that you have control of the market. The market doesn't have control of you. And you are looking at the market from a realistic point of view instead of a market that you want from uh, euphoria. So thank you very much for joining us, spending a few moments with us. The only thing I ask is if you can be so kind, click that like button. That's all I ask. Uh, click the like button, support the channel, and hopefully I can continue to bring you a uh, pretty good value. So let's talk about it, right? So we lost the 50-day moving average on July the 24th. What happened after for the next four weeks? The NASDAQ lost 9.4%. Clear sell signal. We talked about it the first day. As soon as we lost the 50-day moving average, uh, again, you don't want to be long stocks when you lose the 50-day. And what happened for the next four weeks, the NASDAQ wound up losing 9.4%. Now, remember, it's not a death sentence. Moving averages get lost and reclaimed all the time. The question is, how long are we going to stay below? Uh, if you revert back to 2022, we stayed below the 50-day moving average for a whole year, right? For an absolute whole year. So the idea that you lose the moving average, it means that you can never, stocks will never go up again, is absolutely ridiculous. And we saw that happen about a week ago. If you guys remember a week ago, you started seeing bad news, or at least news cycles that presented to be bad. And what happened in those news cycles were the market, instead of going lower, continuously go lower, they started embracing the headlines, the war headlines or potential war headlines, Iran and Israel. Uh, you started seeing uh, negative comments coming in from different Fed governors. Again, all were absolutely embraced. And at some point right around here, we talked about if you go video after video, you kind of see the progression of, of the thinking going forward. And at some point, the sellers got tired. And that was kind of the message uh, in the start of the last week. And I said, if we can get back above the 10-day moving average, we're not going to be out of the woods just yet, but it's at least another baby step that we could get closer and start getting into back the 50-day moving average. And that's exactly what happened. If you watch any uh, workshop, the PS60 theory, and again, guys, I, you know, I welcome you uh, to watch it. There's two parts of the PS60 theory uh, two uh, separate workshops, about 10 hours. It's fr it's completely free, guys. There's nothing, you don't have to give any credit cards. It's completely free. You know, watch them. I think the links are going to be below, uh, below or whatever the case may be. It's 10 hours breaking down the theory. You have no obligation. It's just something for you to see, but there's another, another alternative out there that is, quote unquote, not the normal. And the one thing we kept on talking about is the 10-day moving average is the birth of the trade. So you can see here, the, the market started embracing more bad news, more negative headlines, and we started rallying back all the way to this 20-day supply. And the question was, well, now can we get above the 20-day supply, right? Uh, now that we are, we are so close to the 50-day, is it possible we could just get one more push right to the 50-day moving average? And we got our answer. Uh, Thursday 
uh, reclaim back the 50-day moving average. We talked about this area here. The 73 level needed to confirm. They recaptured the 50-day moving average. And Friday, although a little bit of a muted day, bulls started pushing towards the end of the day, we started building upon Thursday's reclaiming day. Now, what does that mean for the market? Okay, the same, you know, the same thesis that goes from when you lose the 50-day is obviously going to be the opposite, right? When you lose the 50-day, does the market go down every single day? No, of course not. You'll see rallies at certain points. So when you reclaim the 50-day moving average, as is as was the 10-day that's the birth of the trade, well, the 50-day moving average sign signals the birth of a trend. And that's a very, very big macro point of what is potentially going to happen this week. So when we lost the 50-day moving average, the trend became sell bias. We got very aggressive selling, 9.4% for a month. And now that we're above the 50-day moving average, now the bullish sentiment is back. The bulls obviously have to defend, right? Uh, we can't give back that 50-day moving average on the close because the longer we stay and build the base above the 50-day moving average, well, again, all you have to revert is going back to um, Mark, what is it? May the 3rd, right? Look what happened when we uh, recaptured the 50-day 50, 50 moving average on May the 3rd. The queues went from uh, 436 and they went all the way in two months to almost 504. So again, the significance of us closing above the 50-day moving average on Friday is super duper important. Now, write this down, guys. As long as, as long as the queues are closing above 473, it's all good in the hood. Right, absolutely all good in the hood. We're building a base. Uh, we're building distribution. The sellers are comfortable at that level. The buyers are comfortable at that level. So the longer we continue to build that base above 473, everything is all good. If we lose it, not so much. Then we'll start going back back below the 50-day, and, and the buy signal will turn to a sell signal really, really quickly. But the good point about this is, yes, the market will not go up every single day. There'll be distribution, especially in the last interval here. We, we've literally gone from 423 uh, to 476 in two weeks. So you want a little bit of a rest, right? You want those stocks that had massive, massive moves. And we'll kind of, I'll show you in a second, a whole bunch of examples of, of stocks getting back above the 50-day, what they did this week, right? But the good part is, even if those names rest, right? And there's a lot of names that got back above the 50, but even if those, days, those stocks rest, there's going to be a whole slew of stocks coming back above their bottom channels that are still below the 50-day moving average that can start crawling back. Because even if we have distribution days, right, the market goes sideways for one or two days, that's not a sell signal. That's just a market taking a breath. It's like, again, it's like a marathon runner running 26 miles, right, 26 miles, crosses the finish line. It's going to be tired, right? It's going to be tired before we can run another race. And that's exactly what the Bulls did. The Bulls had a major, major marathon, major victory, closed two days above the 50-day moving average, and now it needs to go sideways. So if you look at the correlation between the 50-day on the queues versus the stocks that had really big moves this week, you'll see how quickly and again, why the 50-day is so important. So let me give you guys a whole bunch of examples this week. And if you watch the video, you kind of see we talked about these names every single day before they reclaim the 50-day. If you look at the names this week that reclaim the 50-day moving average, you'll see the correlation how important that 50-day is and why they made such big runs. So let's talk about some names. Avago, right? If you watch Tuesday's video, we talked about, hey, it needs to confirm the 50-day moving average. Avago went from 60 uh, all the way up to 66, consolidating to go higher. Uh, Netflix, right? And this is the blue line here, folks. This is the blue line on my chart that signals the 50-day reclaim. This Netflix reclaimed the 50-day moving average, went from 651 all the way up to 680. We're seeing some short-term uh, short call buying coming in for the 700, even 800 calls on Netflix. But again, look at the run here. You had 25, almost 30-point run in three days. That's a very, very big move. We talked about Texas Instruments, right? Texas Instruments, on the video on Wednesday, we needed to reclaim back the 50-day moving average. Stock went from 93 uh, all the way up to 203. Again, huge, huge move. Look at Apple, right? Apple is one of the very few, uh, one of the very few names before we reclaimed back the 50 that it reclaimed the 50 before anything else. And look at the run. You know, it went from 16 uh, all the way up to 27. Still looks higher. But this week, two major names near and dear to my heart reclaimed the 50-day moving average and had phenomenal, phenomenal moves. So let's talk about them. The first one, da-da-da-da, 
was Mr. Tesla, right? Mr. Tesla. So gave us a nice break above, uh, gave us a really nice break above the 150-day uh, SMA, took out the 204.50 level, got back above the 50-day, and Friday cleared out this whole support. And if you are, excuse me, whole supply. And if you're watching the options montage on Tesla, guys, they're coming for short term. And again, granted, uh, there's me earning season involved with that, but they're coming in for short term 235, 240 calls. I even saw some November uh, November repeat buyers coming in on the, on the 300. So big, big move. And if you look at this whole channel, especially that it confirmed on Friday, there's no supply till all the way up to uh, the July 31st highs of 234. So you can see where the measure potential betting is. Tesla, again, still looks really good. But again, common denominator got back above the 50-day moving average. And NVIDIA, if you watched uh, Wednesday's video, the only thing I kept on saying is, guys, watch the video, right? Just watch this thing. If it reclaims the 50 days, it's going to go. It's going to go. It's going to go. It's going to go. All you have to do is go back to the last video. It's going to go. It's going to go, right? Same common denominator. It got back above uh, the 50-day moving average. I still have a runner. I, I think we could get 26, 27 for this thing uh, this week. Again, they, this is the last mega cap data name uh, that is coming out with earnings on the 28th. So I do believe we could sh get a shot at this 27 uh, supply zone uh, in the next couple of days, assuming the market doesn't lose back the 50-day moving average. But again, here's another example. They're betting, you know, they're betting for into earnings, 135, 140s, 150 calls. And again, very, very uh, bullish action. Well, not everybody, right? Not every single stock in the market has reclaimed the 50-day moving average. And that's the point. Let's watch this week for other stocks to start slowly coming back up to see if they can reclaim as well. There's a lot of names that are below. Let me give you show you a, a significant amount of names that we all like and, and love to trade. You know, look at the names that are not below the 50, uh, still below the 50 day. A Amazon got a lot of work, right? Even though it had a great move off the bottom, uh, Amazon needs to get back above 185 to reclaim the 50 day moving average. So you can see there's a lot of supply in the meantime. Uh, look at AMD, right? AMD, the same thing. Although it had a great move and it gave us some really good pivots this week uh, off the bottom channels. Again, for 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 AMD to be let loose, it's going to need to close above like 155. So again, a lot of work to do, but at least it's still going in the right direction. Look at Microsoft, right? Microsoft, same thing. Microsoft's got killed. For Microsoft to really let loose like NVIDIA and Netflix and Apple and Meta and Tesla and all those... Guys, you got to get all the way back up to 435. So a lot of these names are still well underneath water. And if it's taking time for them to get up, that's the reason. Because there's so much uh, inventory. There's so much supply uh, going into their daily channels. So when you are doing your homework for the weekend, right? If you are doing your research, and you should be. Every single trader should be to get ready for Monday. Look for those names that are above the 50-day moving average or are ready to reclaim. Because those are the names that have a really high, strong possibility of putting in uh, a big run. So if you look at uh, the pivots from Friday, uh, you'll see, right? Here was Thursday's pivot. Again, Thursday's is no video, so I didn't record the pivot, right? Again, what's the common denominator? NVIDIA, 120.16 is the 50-day, huge macro level, right? Stock went to 25 uh, on Friday. Uh, look, you know, again, here's the pivot, 123 and a quarter for Friday went to 25. Here is, you know, here is the pivot on Thursday, right? The big macro break, 208.50 needs to build. You know, Tesla went to 220, right? Went to 220 uh, a day later. Uh, Sava, not a big move, went to like 29.50s. Nice move on Carvana, guys. Carvana had a really nice move here, breaking out here. 153 and 154 uh, needs to confirm. Here was Carvana, right? So it took out the 53, took out the 54, traded all the way up to 56. Looks like it has room all the way up to this 159 uh, linear regression. We saw a big buyer come in uh, for the September 180 call. So, you know, that's definitely uh, definitely noteworthy. Uh, let me see if there was anything else. Uh, I believe that is it. EWTX only went up like 20 cents and kind of stalled out here. Let me give you guys some names for this week that I do like. Uh, watch UPST. UPST had a big, big run uh, you know, it might not go, it might not go in the next couple of days, but watch this thing. We started seeing again, October 50 calls come into the name. It's very, very important because the options market usually does dictate what's going to happen in the underlying security. So keep an eye on this thing for this week. If this, if, if UPST can get back above this channel here 
uh, this thing could wake up. Look at Oracle, right? Again, here's a perfect example of a stock trying to get back above the 50-day moving average. You see how it keeps on getting stuffed at the 50, this light blue line, right? If Oracle could get back above the 50-day moving average, this thing could wake up as well. Again, it looks really, really good. Look at crowd, okay? Crowd is not going to stand out to so many people. I mean, look, look, the 50-day moving average is at 323, but just like the NASDAQ 100, it's putting in baby steps. It hit the five-day, reclaimed, went to the 10. Hit the 10-day, reclaimed, went to the 20. And now it's at the 20-day. And this is just more of a trade. This is not, I don't think it's going to get back to the 50, but you see this whole channel here, right? The July channel here. If they could just get back above this July channel and reclaim the 20-day moving average, why can't this thing go to 275, 280? There's a lot of room in this thing as well. So if you're going through your charts, and I get every trader, I don't care if you're trading for 15 minutes, 15 years, or 15 months, you got to put in the work. You don't wake up one morning and go, I'm a professional trader. Yeah, I guess your money's on the line and it makes you a professional trader, but you're far from a professional trader. So every single, even if you don't look, know what the hell you're looking at, right? Look at charts. It's all muscle memory. Uh, it's all the ability to identify the same thing over and over again. And for all you guys who are just brand new to technical analysis, get a book on Japanese candlesticks. Start there. Okay. Do something proactive that's going to benefit your career. Lay down the foundation. Don't just turn on Twitter and say, what's my favorite follower? You know, what's my favorite uh, follow doing to it? It's ridiculous. It's an amateur move. Get your ass, put some work in. You know, do something productive and start building a foundation because nobody can do this for you, right? Nobody's going to do this for you but you. So do what you got to do. Start looking at charts. Prepare yourself like any other profession, like any other job in the world to put yourself in a position of strength instead of a position of weakness. Guys, God bless everybody. Hope everybody does really, really well. Oh, one last one. One last one. I like Google. I like Google. I like Google. I like Google. Again, Google, again, way under the 50-day moving average is going through some antitrust monopoly issues. But you see this 10-day, right? You see how it got rejected off this 10-day three times? If Google could just get above this 10-day moving average, I think there's a shot here to get to that 268, uh, two, uh, 170, 168, 171 level in the next couple of days, assuming the market continues to act strong. Guys, God bless everybody. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are interested in pivots, guys, there's a link below. 30 days, kick the tires and see if it's something that might interest you. Guys, God bless. And I will see you all on Monday. Take care.